Junior high is awkward. It's confusing. You're realizing things about the world that your parents omit. You realize things about yourself you hadn't considered before. You begin to realize what your passions are. There will be people who don't like you for no reason other than you're different. There are bullies. There are victims. Hate begins to solidify in your being, and so does love. We begin to question authority, and we begin to elevate our idols. We make our first real decisions to either live or give up. Hello and welcome to episode 36 of One Man's Opinion, where I review professional theater on Broadway, national tours, and across Connecticut. Today we have a special bonus episode as I review an off-Broadway musical, Trevor, a new musical with books and lyrics by Dan Collins and music by Julianne Wick Davis, directed by Mark Bruni and choreographed by Josh Prince. The musical is running at Stage 42 at 422 West 42nd Street in New York City. Based on the 1995 Academy Award winning short film of the same name, Trevor takes place in 1981 in a suburban American town. When Ronald Reagan is the new vestige of American idealism, the boys are boys, the girls are girls, and Trevor, played by Holden William Hagelberger, is a tween who lives in a Diana Ross fantasy world with his own Diana Ross, played by Yasmin Suleiman, prefers to dance instead of playing, sp and blissfully lives in the soon-to-be-obliviated ignorance of youthful hopefulness. When his junior high school holds auditions for its annual talent show, his Diana Ross-infused audition is summarily rejected. He decides instead to take the football team, who traditionally dances in pink tutus, and teach them a Fred Astaire-stylized musical dance number. Trevor discovers he has feelings for Pinky, played by Sammy Dell, who is one of the boys on the team. These feelings lead to the overall conflicts of the musical. The first half of Trevor I had mixed feelings with, uh, knowing how the homosexual community was treated, especially in more conservative pockets of America in the early 80s. I anxiously sat through number after number of enjoyable, bright, and optimistic music. The audience was eating up the joyful optimism of Trevor through most of the first act while I sat there wondering when will the ground open up uh, from under his feet and when it does, will it be so dramatic a turn that it will feel disjointed? Well, it, the turn does happen, but thankfully when it does, the shift is handled with delicate care by director Bruni. Sometimes it's difficult to remember how life and death every little decision and action was in junior high. This isn't just for Trevor. This is for every other student in the story as well. Do the motivations of most of the other students lean toward the malevolent? Sometimes yes, and that is part of the lesson to be learned here for younger audiences and adults alike. Children's brains aren't entirely developed yet, and their actions tend to lean toward the irrational and illogical, and it is up to those in authority to deal with these issues appropriately, whether it be firmly or delicately. If there was a plot point that I wish was better addressed in Trevor, it would have been this. Kids can be horrible human beings, especially in the junior high age, but addressing where these behaviors come from would have better developed the more bullying characters. I think the story plays down the adult's responsibility here. Maybe a character developing song for the kids aside from Trevor would, would help give them some more depth, layering the context of their own victimhood by the adults in their lives, which they in turn heap upon Trevor. Holden William Hagelberger is a star in the making. His second act song, Wrong, is a heart-wrenching, brutal performance of despair and loneliness. The supporting cast, anchored by Sammy Dell and Yasmin Suleiman, are excellent. Dell and Aryan Simhadri, who plays Trevor's best friend Walter, have the most to work with as developed characters and deliver great performances, while the rest of the cast, which is almost entirely consisting of tween to teenage actors, are all wonderful as well, though their characters don't have as much definition and can sometimes be a little one-note. I would hope if Trevor makes the move to Broadway that Collins and Wick Davis will consider giving the ensemble their own song of self-reflection. We were 
all angst-ridden teens at some point, but we also dwelled a lot on why we were so angst-ridden and who we wanted to blame for it, and I think this cast of talented young actors can handle the task. And that's One Man's Opinion of Trevor, currently running at Stage 42 Off-Broadway. Please leave your opinion in the comments below. If you're interested in tickets for Trevor, I'll leave a link in the description. If you liked this video, hit like, share it with your friends, and subscribe for future reviews. My next review will be Music Theater of Connecticut's production of Who's Holiday. So until next time, I'll see you at the theater.